we're going to start with the theory of natural history. This is the wrong kind of hair for what for ringing flocks, okay? This is, this is what's referred to as spinning hair. You see how soft it is and how big and long and large it is, right? You don't want to use this. You're not going to tie a size 10 on this, never mind a size 18. So whenever it is that you're working with hair, what you have to do is you have to scale for the hair. You have to scale to the size of the fly that you are tying. And you can also get different types of hair. Here are three packages. These are all natural, but as you can see, they're slightly different color combinations. And this is coastal deer hair. So by definition, this is also uh, quite a bit smaller and finer. Uh, if you are lucky enough and the, and the insects don't get it, which happened to me, um, you get a deer mask from somebody. That's the face part. And up on the nose and whatnot around here, the hair is exactly the same as this, as this uh, nice spongy, big, long hair stuff, except it's about a quarter of an inch long. Um, I'm going to tie in hair and it's whether are you going to tie it in as a haystack approach, a split wing approach, um, uh, as a post, the process is all the same. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, but we'll just get that, get you going here. So what I have found, a nice easy way to do it, is to take the point of your scissors, find a section that's as straight as possible, and just use the scissors to separate out a bundle. Now I'd love to be able to tell you how many hairs you need for each size book. I'd love to be able to tell you that, but I'd be lying through my teeth. The best thing that I can advise you is take more than you think you need and start pulling stuff off until you get what you think is right. Most often than not, we will use too much. It's just a we seem to have this idea that the little is good, then more is better, right? Isn't that the American approach to things? I'm not sure. My poor old mother in law, when I would do this, would say, Is there somebody at the door? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you do this right, you take it out with the proper hand, and you don't have to do this. Okay, so here you go. If I was going to do this as a split wing, or if I was going to do it as a haystack or whatever, it would all be the same. You want to put your thread there, and sort of measure it up for length, hold it over. And if you try to tie that bundle in right now, it's just going to wrap itself all the way around the whole chain. So what you do is take a turn of thread just around the hair, push it down to the hook, and then take the first tight detail. What that will help do is keep the hair up on top of the hook. Start applying the pressure. Never wrap in front. You want your successive wraps to be behind the, the previous one. You're basically wrapping towards the tail. I'm going to do something that I would never do. I'm going to let go of the tail. Okay? See there? Normally would not do that. You hold on to that. Take your scissors, you want to trim this at an angle. You don't want to cut the hook, children. There you go. Trim it at an angle. Because I let go, I missed it. Okay? And then what you want to do is you want to just sort of use your thread loosely at first to gather that up. Form a nice taper. Afraid to put some wraps of thread on, and you're going to cover it with, with dubbing and whatnot, anyway, right? Okay, so all right. So if I were going to take this now and turn it into split wings or into um, Parachute, I would still have to do this, whether I was going to do it as a haystack. So, the key to it is 
A lot of people will tie these up and they'll look fine. They're all standing up nice and straight in their in the vice. And then about three months later, they'll look in their, their kits and their fly boxes, and all the wings are a disco. Okay? And the reason is, is because you have to have as much thread built up in front as you have at the back. If you don't do that, it will move forward. So the problem is, is it forms quite a big bump. The way I'd like to finish it so that I can get those last few wraps in is I change the angle of my thread to a 45 degree like that. And I, I tuck the, the thread up on the top and behind the bump. And that way I end up with everything standing up nice and straight like that. And those, those wings, they'll stay upright for the whole time. Now it's very important if you're going to do a tail on this of deer hair, you're going to take your bundle of deer hair, and what you're going to do is, is you're going to cut the, bit, the butts of that at, a, at an angle. And that angle is to fit on top of here. Let me just quick way to talk about it is actually here. Okay, so you're going to take a little bundle of hair. This is, uh, that's too much. What else is going to show you? Right, so it's just going to go. Put that in there. And um, okay, so you measure up for your length, all right? And then you eyeball it here. And what you want to do is you want to cut the material at an angle. See the angle there? The idea is that matches the angle here. You line them up right on top. Back there. Okay. Put your thread up, and then instead of wrapping backwards, which is what you think you want to do, what you want to do is exactly the same process that you did before. A couple of loose turns first, gather up that hair, and match it right on top of. And now you end up with a nice, level, even-sized body. And then when you come back to the back here. Um, again, loosen up those last couple of turns because you, you don't want this to look like a, a brush. You just want it to be sort of straight on like that. Okay, so that's that's how you deal with that. Part. Now, if I'm going to make this a, um, if I'm going to make this a haystack, well, believe it or not, all you have to do is grab the hair, pull it out to the sides. Okay, can you see that? The idea is to get a 180. This is what will hold the fly up, the, the, the sides of that thing, right? If I want to turn it into split wings, I'm going to spread it. Just sort of, okay? And what I will do is I'll usually take a needle and try to divide this in half. I never get it precisely, but you know. And what I like to do is I'll take one, two, three X wraps between it there. And I'll grab the hair on the other side and do one, two, three times there. Now comes the important part. If you look at it now, it's sort of sticking out to the side. You want to come up a little more. To do that, what I do is go and I wrap around the base of each wing. One. Basically what I'm trying to do is reinforce the base and that one. I come around this side. And what it'll allow me to do is kind of neat. Let's we'll see it in a second. Four or five turns. And now I can actually go under it like this. And see the difference in the wings? And they'll stay there pretty much like that. Okay? Now the only problem with these wings is that when they get wet, they end up being two little stumps, two little sticks like that. 
So we sort of lost the whole point of having a lamp. Um, window with two sticks. It's the same is true with um, with rolled wings. You know, when you pull up flank feathers and roll them up and tie them in, split them like that, and they, they'll spread for you in there. And as soon as you get them on the water and they get wet, and there were two little sticks up there. So if you want spiked antlers, like on a young buck deer, that's perfect for it, all right? This doesn't make any sense to me. Secondly, that doesn't look anything like a mayfly. Mayflies don't sit up there with their wings spread out like this. What do they look like? They look like little sailboats, little one-masted sailboats. With the, the wings are together over their back in a kind of triangular shape, okay? So, we should tie a wing that looks like that, I think. And I use deer hair or, um, or um, snowshoe rabbit flip for that purpose. And I call this a wedge wing. I have no idea how to do so. I'll show you a finished one. Where are you? Here we are. There's the idea. See now? There's the triangle over the top of its back like this. And when you look on it head on, it's narrow and flat. Okay? And when I started tying these, I, I remember a, a memorable, we always have a memorable fish, right? I was on the ground one day and this fish was rising, and there were like Cahill's about. And I threw a tan usual over it and it promptly ignored me. So then I, I tried a couple of different times, it didn't work. So then I switched to a, a, a Cahill, you know, one of those ones with the split wings and the hackle and the whole bit, the nice traditional thing, and it totally ignored that to me. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. And I, let me, might as well not have been. And into my box was one of these wedge wing things that I've been playing with. And I said, well, let me try that. First cast over that fish, that fish came up and ate it. And I'm convinced it's because the profile is right. That or the fish finally said, look, I better eat something here, I'm gonna die of starvation. I'm not sure what else. But that time it worked, and it's worked a number of times for me since. Again, we'll get one of those scientific me measures here called the clump. Okay. Achieve this wedge shape, you really have to do something a little bit. First of all, you really don't want to use too much. You got too much, it's just too hard to handle. Okay? There's your bundle. Okay. So what I'm trying to achieve is an angle. I'll put some of this up a little at the top. So, what you have to do now is stack this hair on here. To do that, I do a full loop. So I bring my thread up, and I pinch it between my thumb and my forefinger, go down, underneath, and around, and back up, and I'm pulling straight up. Pull straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. So I got it nice and tight, and I'm going to wrap forward. The idea is I didn't use too much hair, which I did. But you're going to get that nice strong profile. So you get a better look. And we'll do 
a little bit mobile on here until these last down buttons. So that is the effect that I want. I want that thing to be up there. Still use too much there. But that's what this is there for. And you can tell it uses too much energy because it's coming up from the like this. So always be aware of where your thread is. trying to achieve. It's this wedge like shape like that. I am not averse to actually taking my scissors and just trimming that back so I get a nice straight line back there and finish it normally after that. Very straightforward. But what you're trying to achieve, and hopefully I've achieved it, is it's view from head on is narrow. See like that? And the view from the side gives you that distinction. When you, when you, when you coat this with uh, float, you'll actually control how, uh, how it looks. And as I said, I have, I've had good success with it on times when the fish have been particularly selective. But it takes, and I haven't tried one of these in about two years. So it takes a little bit of uh, practice to get the right amount of hair to do it. Uh, I use too much hair. So can we call this Sheldon's wedgie? It's a wedgie. That's what it is. I, I wrote it up as the snowshoe wedgie in the uh, yeah. Canadian Fly Fishing Magazine many, many years ago. Okay. And you can do it. It's actually a little easier, I think, with the snowshoe rabbit. Okay, so there you go. I'll just tie that off. Speaking of snowshoe rabbit, Sheldon, would you dump the body before you put that wing on? Uh, as a matter of fact, that's a good question. Um, if you are using haystack, split wing, um, uh, as a parachute post, you will put the wing on first. But with that wedge wing, you actually build the body up and do it last. And then when you put your hackle on, you only put it on in front of the wing. And then what I will typically do, uh, where did you go? Look at that carefully. Can you see that? As you can see, I've cut a V out of the bottom of the hackle. So it will sit on the water very flat. I want it to be right down on the water like that. Okay?